Turner Network Television presents Super Football Saturday Night. Tonight, the number two-ranked Oklahoma Sooners take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. And by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name in taste. Everything else is just a light. At the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, it's the Sooners of Oklahoma and the Golden Gophers of the University of Minnesota. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning here in Minneapolis. Well, it's sort of a late start to the Sooners this season. This is our fifth game. This is their kickoff game. And I think Barry Switzer's worried about that. Opening game jitters, maybe. At least we woke up this morning. Oklahoma's rated number two. And your Tennessee Volunteers took care of Auburn today. And in effect, folks, you're looking at the number one rated team in the country. The Oklahoma Sooners, they've got great speed. They've got a great defense. They've got a guy named T Tony Casillas who uh, many people think naturally is going to be a number one draft choice, but they think he's the best defensive lineman in the country. Let's talk about their quarterback, Troy Aikman. Well, that's the question mark. Now, folks, you won't believe this, but they don't have a quarterback that can run 4-4 four, four, and 4-3. Four, this one only runs 4-6, four, 4.6 four in the 40-yard dash. But Troy Aikman is 6'3", 215 pounds. He's a sophomore. They say he's got a great arm. And would you believe the Oklahoma Sooners are going to throw the football in some pro sets, four receivers going out? On, on the passing offense, and that is unusual for Oklahoma. All right, let's talk about Minnesota. They have a quarterback named Ricky Foggy. Well, he's the key, Lindsay. He's a great athlete. He just does things. Lou Holtz today told us, he said, he can beat you four ways. He can beat you with his arm, with his feet, with his head, and with his heart. He's a great, incredible football player who makes the right moves at the right time. He did it last year. He's only a sophomore, and he's going to be here for a long time to Lou Holtz's uh, pleasure. All right, Paul, and right now we're going to go to the studio to Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins. When the season started, Oklahoma was number one. They do have a chance to move into the top spot. Yes, Craig, they do, Auburn. but they're going to have to play a game first. <laughs> and tonight they're going to have a tough game in store with Minnesota. What happened to Auburn, Tennessee today? Auburn was destroyed this afternoon. They uh, just ran into a bunch of Tennessee volunteers. There's Bo Jackson before leaving the game. Uh, he'd gained 80 yards. He had a knee injury and didn't play in that uh, most of the second half. Here we have Tony Robinson connecting with Tim McGee from Tennessee on a 38-yard touchdown pass. That made it 14 to nothing, and Auburn was really never in the game after that. Is Tony Robinson a Heisman Trophy candidate? Uh, he may not be a Heisman Trophy. He's, he's a fine quarterback. He's got good quick feet, good quick release, and he's got a good quick head, and he can, he's got leadership. Great. Elsewhere today, the Big Ten continued to roll. Only once in history have nine teams from the Big Ten Conference won games on the same day. It happened two weeks ago. This afternoon, the Big Ten was eight for eight. Illinois was idle. A win by Minnesota, they can do it again. They are off to the best start ever, and they, there's parity in that uh, Big Ten for a change, too. And we'll see how Minnesota can do against Oklahoma right after this. At the center of the field, Minnesota has won the toss and waved off the choice. The choice then becomes that of Oklahoma, and Oklahoma has elected to receive. Choice at the start of the second half will be that of Minnesota. This is Turner Network Television. The Minnesota Golden Gophers along the sideline. We are indoors here now at the Metrodome. And that is artificial turf. It has been raining outside. So we're just about set to go. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. And now it's going to be Minnesota kicking off. And it will be Chip Low Miller doing the kicking off. And the deep men are Earl Johnson back there, along with Leon Perry, to receive it for Oklahoma. And if you're wondering why Minnesota elected to wave off the choice, let Oklahoma have the football, they'll have the choice in the second half. And I'm sure Lou Holtz will want to receive in the opening of the second half. They kick it off, of course, from the 40-yard line. The first time that these two teams ever have met. And here is Lovella with a kick in the air. Retreats, takes it eight yards deep in the end zone, touchback, first and ten at the 20-yard line. 
So the Sooners of the University of Oklahoma now. Come out there with Troy Aikman to run the attack. He is a sophomore from Henrietta, Oklahoma. And there's the offensive alignment. Tillman Collins car and the slit in is Shepard. There's the tight end Keith Jackson and the offensive line. This will be the first offensive play of this season for the Sooners of Oklahoma. And there's no worry about King on somebody. Everybody back there in that wishbone can run. Spencer Tillman, of course, was the star last year. Swing a wing back out of the wishbone, and there's a penalty marker, two or three penalty markers, a handoff to Lydell Carr. And Carr was upended by the Minnesota defense, but there's a marker to be checked out. Steve Thompson made the hit. The referee is Tom Quinn. Procedure call against Oklahoma. And there is Barry Switzer who's in his 13th season as head coach at Oklahoma. And he's just kind of shaking his head out there. He, he really can't believe it the first. I don't think he saw too much wrong with that play. First play of the year for the Oklahoma Sooners. We're in our fifth game, folks. Broadcasting here on WTBS. And this is Oklahoma's very first game. It is first down at 15 yards to go. They shift now back into the ball. Sacked up after a gain of a yard. It's going to be second down at 14. At the 16 yard line, Steve Thompson of Aurora, Illinois, made the tackle. There's the defensive alignment for Minnesota. Doug Mueller starting on the nose tonight. There are the linebackers. Two good inside linebackers. Nigerian and Holmes. And the deep men. Second down coming. For the Stoners of Oklahoma. Eight from the quarterback. to his right halfback and there's running room out there for Tillman and Tillman has a first and ten at the 34 yard line 19 yard pickup and folks second and 14 is not a passing situation for this Oklahoma team it never has been here here comes Spencer Tillman what a beautiful cut look at the blocking at the point of attack and Tillman gets 19 yards in the first down they spotted squarely on the 35 now David Williams made the last stop Troy Aikman brings the Sooners up. This game having just begun here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. A wing back right out of the bone. Give it off to his fullback, riding in across the 45-yard line. Lydell Carr from Enid, Oklahoma, carried the ball. Across the 45-yard line, Nigerian made the tackle. Lou Holtz in the sweater there along the sideline. Second year as head coach. Well, Lindsay, that's what Lou Holtz was worried about. People up front on defense being manhandled by this big offensive line of Oklahoma. 19-yard pickup, comes right back, gives it to the fullback, Lydell Carr. Car. He picks up 11. And in all honesty, uh, you look back on Oklahoma over the years, they've beaten themselves more than other teams have beaten them. So Lou Holtz has got a hope for turnovers. First and 10 at the 46-yard line for the Sooners. Penalty marker is thrown, and the halfback uh, took the handoff. And it was carried up to the 48-yard line, but there's a marker to be checked. When they shifted, they were not set for that one count before the snap of the center. Collins carried the football. After they shift, they have to come to a complete rest for one second. Yeah. Ask Nigerian up there to exercise the option for Minnesota. The legal shift on the offense declines two. I was kidding, Barry. I said, usually every time we see Oklahoma, and you folks know this, that usually they have a quarterback who runs 4-4, four, 4-5. Four, four, They've got a slow quarterback now, and Aikman, he runs 4.6 in the 40-yard dance, but he's got the good arm, and they say that they've changed a lot of the offense because of this kid. Second and eight at the 48-yard line. Completed the two out in the left side. He's across the 50 and gets it on down to the 47-yard line. Spencer Tillman from Tulsa, Oklahoma. He should have waited for his left guard, Eric Polk. Big left guard, 6'2", 266 pounds, was coming out to block for him, Lindsay. It was a little quick screen left. Now, we can see if we can pick up the left guard. Here, you see him set up. He turns back to the quarterback. Now he should wait for the uh, his offensive lineman. Look at number 63. He does not wait for that block. He could have gotten the first down if he would have waited for Eric Polk. Third down and about three and a half yards to go. Derek Shepard's in a wide right. Tillman's in a wing left. Aikman's 
cut them off. And it was carried across the 45 by Lydell Carr. Did Bobbitt made the tackle? And I think they're going to rule it. His knee touched just when they got past the 45-yard line. It may be a little bit short, Lindsay. Yes. Let's see where they're marking. Here we get a good end zone shot. This is the big fullback, Lydell Carr from Enid, Oklahoma. Just a little power play off the left side. That's the wishbone. Basic play, that's where it starts, with the fullback. He can even hand it to the fullback, run the option, keep it himself, a flip back to his back. Three things can happen off of that. Fourth down and a yard to go, and they're going to go for it. They have the ball at the 44-yard line of Minnesota and Oklahoma going for it. And the wishbone. They're going to the fullback, and Lydell Carr took it in first and 10 at the 42-yard line. And Bruce Holmes from Detroit, Michigan, made the tackle. You know, this late start always brings up that age-old debate. Does Minnesota have the advantage because it had two games under its belt while Oklahoma had not yet played? Or did the Sooners have the advantage because they didn't, they haven't shown the Golden Gophers anything while Oklahoma has had a chance to watch Minnesota on film twice? Well, we'll see. First and ten outside the 41. College is back to the right side. They're in a slot left. Aitman with the football. Looks to go long. And it's deflected incomplete. Deflected incomplete. Bruce Holmes had a hand on that one, and it was the Spencer Tillman for whom it was intended. He's got the good strong arm here, but he th threw it very close to this linebacker, Mr. Bruce Holmes, and he had a shot. You see, him get his hands up there, almost intercepted. He's six foot three, Mr. Holmes from Detroit, and he almost deflected it for an interception. Second and ten at the 41-yard line. Now they're sending Shepard out on a wide right. Running backs in the wishbone. Aikman's the quarterback. Gave it to his fullback who got to the 39-yard line. Lydell Carr carrying. He was popped at the 39. I'll tell you one thing, and Lindsay and I could attest to this, that Lou Holtz has got this town up up in an uproar there you see a shot of him this place is packed folks so there's not a seat in the house and minnesota football is back alive travis simpson was shaken up and he is leaving the field it's a beautiful dome lens this is my first time in here this place is great vantage point for football it's his third down at seven yards to go on the 38 yard line setback for Oklahoma. Double wing now. This is the throwing for Aikman. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. The big tight end was coming across. That's Keith Jackson. And he missed him. And he's no kin, of course, to the great Keith Jackson, uh, the announcer. But watch him. There he is. A little delay with the tight end. Almost running a pick there for him. And it was just a little... Too far out in front. Incomplete. Mike Winchester comes in to do the punting now. And there is a whistle. Rocky Gaylord had dropped back deep. However, now we're going to get a timeout, and we'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Winchester gets the punt off. Gaylord calls for a fair catch and lets it go. It's going to be into the end zone, and that is a touchback. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. So Minnesota gets the ball now on their own 20, get it for the first time tonight. And Ricky Foggy comes out to run the attack. Here's the offensive alignment now. Baylor Puck, Couch, and of course the split end, Gaylord. Rocky Gaylord. There's the offensive line. The tight end is Kevin Starks. This is the fourth season that the Golden Gophers have played indoors here at Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. Largest crowd they've drawn here is 63,872. They're getting the ball spotted out there at the 20-yard line now. And this is a young offensive line too, Lindsey, but I think Lou Holtz thinks it's one of the strong points of his team. Uh, they got off uh, to a flying start with their first two victories, but they don't have a senior in that starting lineup in that offensive line, and they're big. They have a 265-pound tackle to tackle. Gary Couch is in a wide left in this alignment. Ricky Foggy. Hanging 
on to the ball. He'll do that. He'll do all sorts of things. He is the heart of the offense. He gained two yards out to the 22. He better. They got no shot. <laughs> You're right. I tell you, he's he's averaging eight yards a carry, rushing the football. There you see his 84 stats. But so far this year, he's averaging eight yards every time he runs the football. He's completed almost 70% of his passes, and he's the heart and soul of this team. He is from Waterloo, South Carolina. He's got the football, swings it out the left flat. He's hit it out there now. And it's taken to the 23-yard line by Ed Penn, P-E-N-N, Ed Penn. Out to the 23 for one. It'll be third down and seven yards to go. Boy, what a great tackle by Kevin Murphy. He is also, uh, in fact, in our meeting this morning with Barry Switzer, he believes he's got three number one draft choices playing in this defense. They have nine starters back from last year. They were rated, what, Lindsay, number one in the country against the rush last year. This is a great defense, and they're very, very quick. Penalty marker on the last play, so the officials back up to talk it over. There you see Murphy, who made the stop, number 39. He's a great defensive end. Referee Tom Quinn taking a look. That was a clip against Minnesota. It's just a running screen to the left. He had his offensive lineman out in front, and he got a clip. There's Tony Casillas. You get a good look at him there, folks. Six foot three, 280 pounds, and he'll probably be the number one lineman taken in next year's draft. In fact, what did he, he say next to Leroy Selman? He's the best defensive player we've ever had here. That's what he said. That's, that's saying a lot, isn't that's it? That's high praise, isn't it? He's so good, Lindsay. I want to just tell the viewers at home, if you really want to see, sometimes just take a look at the center and take a look at this nose guard playing right on top of the center. You'll see a lot because he is something to watch. Second and 18 back at the 12-yard line now. Foggy has the ball rolling and throwing and short hop, incomplete. Tried to get it out to Gary Couch, sophomore from Davenport, Indiana, and covering defensively was Sonny Brown. He was open, Lindsay. That'll make it third and 18 at the 12-yard line. Uh, if I could like to have that one back, he was wide open out there. Would have had the first down or close to it. Foggy and Couch talk things over a little bit there as they head back to the huddle. No score in the game. We're in the first quarter here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. O.J. Abercrombie has been in and out of that backfield. Number 33, they're in a slot right. Couch in motion across. Foggy with the ball, and Foggy is going to run it. 15, 20, and to the 21-yard line. And Tony Rayburn made the tackle. He got 10 back. Going to have to punt. And so the punting unit comes out of the field. As you see, Lou Holtz in the sweater along the sideline there, and Adam Kelly will do the punting for Minnesota. Derek Shepard has dropped back deep, number three, to receive the punt. And ahead of him is Sonny Brown in tandem upfield. There are the stats on Kelly. His first punt of the night for Minnesota. Scott Gould intend to make the snap. <laughs> Shepard drops the ball. To the 25, the 30, the 35, and Shepard. Returned it to the 39-yard line where they'll start first and 10. We'll be back in just a moment. Trailing TCU 7 and nothing, SMU comes right back on this 21-yard score strike from Don King to Albert Reese. So it's TCU and SMU knotted up at 7-all. Facing along the sideline as his defensive unit is on the field and Oklahoma is in there. Stell is in there at halfback now. He'll be in and out along with Collins. Aikman's the quarterback. Give it to the fullback instead. And it is Lydell Carr who moves it to the 43-yard line. Picked up four yards on the play to make it second and six. Nine minutes, three seconds remaining in the first quarter. Doug Mueller, the nose guard, made the last tackle. Both of these schools, Oklahoma and Minnesota, rich in football tradition. That is Coach Barry Switzer in his 13th season. 
as the head coach of Oklahoma. Tillman's in the wing left here. Nice shift back into the wishbone as they move the tight end over right. The option, and Aikman's got the ball. Aikman still got it across to the 49-yard line. First and 10 Oklahoma in Minnesota territory. Well, last year they had a marvelous option quarterback, Danny Bradley, for Oklahoma. And this, this kid, Troy Aikman, very said he's not as quick as Bradley, but he makes good decisions. You can see the big six foot three sophomore uh, made a nice move there on the option, cut back inside, got the first down. So the Sooners have moved it into Minnesota territory. Derek Shepard is wide to the left side. Aikman quarterback. Aikman's got the ball and takes it to the fullback, took it to the 46, and he was upended by Anthony Burke. There's a blown assignment, Glendy. Somebody went the wrong way there. A little uh, miscommunication here offensively. Here's the wishbone. He looks to fullback, and the fullback went the wrong way. Fullback went on the right side, and he was supposed to fake it over the left guard, and you can see what happens when that, uh, that occurs. He had to take it himself in a little quarterback sneak, although it was a wise thing to do when something like that happens. It's very smart just to go ahead and run the quarterback sneak. Second and seven at the 46-yard line. The cell incomplete. He tried to hit Damon Cell on a turnout. It'll be third and seven at the 46-yard line. That, he threw it a little bit too quick. The man was wide open. He did a little corner move. Damon Stell, sophomore from Oklahoma City. And, of course, that'll come with the experience. Been waiting a long time. This Oklahoma team, you can imagine, folks, highly rated. They were picked number one before the year's over. And they, they were getting a little bit anxious, I would guess. Get started. Shepard and Snell are the wide receivers left and right. Aikman handing it off. And on a delay, it's taken down to the 36-yard line by Spencer Tillman. And that's a first and ten for Oklahoma. As I said before, third and seven, second, 16, never passing down for this team. Here comes the little rollout draw. Spencer Tillman gets 15 yards. Look at the blocking up front. That's Travis Simpson, Lydell Carr double teaming the nose guard, and Spencer Tillman down with 29 yards rushing on three carries. Bruce Holmes made the last tackle, first and 10 now. Oklahoma to Minnesota, 36. Getting it back, and it's Tillman, and he's across the 30, and Tillman's inside the 25-yard line. I think he got the other first down. Small made the tackle. Nice move for 12 yards, Lindsey. And Lou Holtz told us that this defensively we cannot have poor tackling if we expect to stay with this team you're going to see poor tackling coming up right now watch Tillman he goes outside now watch the man come there's one missed tackle and he cut right inside of two missed tackles if you wonder why Oklahoma has not played a game before they were scheduled to have played SMU on the 14th however the game was moved to December for television it'll be played on December 7th Oklahoma and SMU so Oklahoma has not been in action, and now they are taking a timeout. So with no score, we'll be right back. This is Turner Network Television. <laughs> Oklahoma, 15-1 and one in season opener since 1969. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning. We're in Minnesota. It rained most of the day. They had snow last Monday, but they play indoors at the Metrodome. Last year, Oklahoma averaged over 200 yards rushing. They've already got 80 yards rushing here in the first, first quarter. First and 10, Oklahoma at the Minnesota 24-yard line. They're sending Shepard in a wide right. Tillman in a wing left. Aikman is the quarterback. Stell and Carr are the setbacks, and now they shift Tillman back into the bone. Well, that whole offense is to the right. Tillman's got the ball. Tillman's at the 15-yard line. Looks to be about a foot short of a first down. That's a, just a straight blast off the right side with the tight end on the right. Wishbone cocked to the right. Here's a look at Peter Nigerian, the linebacker over here. And he's got some people coming right at him. There's a big fullback trying to get underneath, and he does get a good block, even though Nigerian does get an arm and tries to make an arm tackle. But Spencer Tillman's not the type of back you're going to arm tackle much, man. Lou Holtz looking on. It's not one foot for a first down. It's two feet for a first down. Second coming at the 15-yard line. Taken by the fullback and Lydell Carr. 
Wrote it into the 10 yard line for five where it's going to be first down and 10 yards to go. Offensive line starting to take its toll now on that Minnesota defense. Uh, just really block them at the line of, at the point of attack, Lindsay. They're really manhandling the defense. If spotted just outside the 10, it would be possible to pick up a first down with, uh, without scoring a touchdown, but highly improbable. of a yard back at the 11 yard line well Larry Joyner the first man there they didn't manhandle anybody that time good defense Larry Joyner of course is probably their best look at him take everybody on oh what a great play Larry Joyner Jr. out of Memphis makes a sensational play for that gopher defense and you know he's not too big he's listed 6'1 200 Lou Holt said Paul he's no bigger than six foot he Maybe ring and wet might weigh 200 pounds. Patrick Collins is in that backfield now, and that's Shepard in a wide right. Oh, left, guard and, uh, left guard moved, and the penalty marker goes down. Eric Colt is going to cost them five. Dead ball. Ball start. Open. It was Eric Colt, the left guard. It'll be third and 16 at the 16. I beg your pardon, second. Down doesn't count, of course. Get a look at this packed crowd. All start. Offense. It's at the 16-yard line, and this is second down. And that is Patrick Collins in the wide right. Shepard is in the wide left. inside the 10-yard line. I'm telling you, Lindsay, that pole off the right side, Anthony Phillips, the right tackle for Oklahoma, is 6'3", 275, only a freshman, and they're just going over the right side at will. Look at that big fullback, Lydell Carr, and Spencer just gets his body right behind the big fullback. He's got 59 yards now on six carries. Third and seven at the seven. Big third down. Barry Hill is in that tight end as well. Minnesota gets out of here with only three. They've been lucky. Here comes the option. Oh, did he get hit? He got hit just as he crossed the four-yard line. Aikman kept the football. It's going to be fourth down. Coming up. The field goal man is Tim Lasher. Holmes made the last tackle. I'll tell you one thing. You don't see too many quarterbacks stick their head in here. And this place is going crazy, folks. Watch him. And he makes a good move. Now, Troy Aikman makes a good move. He's going for the first down, and did he get hit? I really couldn't see the number there. It had to be one of the linebackers. I think it was Nigerian or Bruce Holmes on that stop. It was Holmes. Woo, did he get hit? This is a 21-yard field goal attempt for Tim Lasher, and holding from is David Vickers and snapping is Kevin Atkins. 10 out of 13 last year. It's good. And so the Sooners have drawn first blood. They've gone out in front by a score of three to nothing, and we'll be right back. There's a downpour in Texas, but it doesn't seem to bother SMU's Reggie Dupard. He takes his pitch, goes off the right side, sprints 62 yards down that right sideline, making that game SMU 14. TCU 7. Back to you, Lindsey Nelson. And now for Oklahoma, Todd Thompson is doing the kicking off. He has keyed it up at the 40-yard line. And Rocky Gaylord is center deep to receive it for Minnesota. Three minutes, 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Oklahoma leading by a score of 3 to nothing. Here's Thompson's kickoff. Rocky Gaylord, five yards deep in the end zone, and he will not run it out. Touchback, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. So the Golden Gophers start once again. We were saying that both of these schools are rich in football tradition. Murray Warmoth, who was the head coach at Minnesota for 18 years, is seated on the level just below us in the press box section here. Good to see Murray earlier in the ball game. And now Minnesota's got to start trying to move the football a little bit. They haven't have yet to make a first down, Lindsay. And of course, Mr. Foggy has got to loosen up his arm. He's going to have to throw the football a little bit. Rick 
Archie Foggy brings them up in an eye formation. Foggy's got the football. He's keeping it on the option. And he gets three to the 23. It'll be second and seven there. On the tackle, Ricky Dixon from Dallas, Texas. Barry Switzer. Foggy had two sensational games against Wichita State, the opener, and then, of course, they killed Montana 62 to 17. Of course, this defense is a little bit different. Well, as Baylor has come out, and Ed Penn has come in there from Minnesota. They come out with wishbone themselves, and they move it up to the 24 with Gary Couch carrying. Couch carrying out of the wishbone for Minnesota, got a yard. It'll be third and six. Richard Reed in to make the tackle. He's from Fort Worth, Texas. Valdez Baylor comes back into the lineup. Ed Penn comes off for Minnesota. Rocky Gaylord far to the left side. It'll be fourth and two there. Bosworth made the tackle. Brian Bosworth, the sophomore from Irving, Texas. He's listed at 234-62. Well, Pocky made a couple of good moves, but he's going to come up a little bit short. We're going to have to kick it. So here comes the punting unit onto the field led by Adam Kelly from Excelsior, Minnesota. He's a senior. See what Oklahoma's defense is doing, Lindsay, is when he starts that rollout, he's so dangerous when he gets outside. That defensive end is making him turn it up inside so they're hoping for that pursuit they're so quick on the inside to stop him and they have stopped him so far Kelly's punted only once that for 53 yards Derek Shepard is deep it'll be short and it is down at the 39 yard line so they'll start first and 10 at their own 39 yard line look at here one of the great coaches of all time of course, he coached at Oklahoma, and he was an All-American guard right here at Minnesota. 1935 National Championship team in 1936, and he had a few national championships out at Oklahoma, didn't he, Lynn? I'll say he did. He had a great career out there. Classy man. First and 10 at the 39-yard line for the Sooners of Oklahoma, who are leading by a score of three, and I think it was one minute, 40 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Troy Aikman. 6'3", 213-pound quarterback. He got it to his pullback. we running room all the way up to the 50-yard line. Earl Johnson from Dallas, Texas, carried the ball. First and 10 at the 50, and it was Bruce Holmes on the tackle. What a wealth of running backs Oklahoma has had over the years. They're all fast. This number five, Earl Johnson, the junior from Dallas, Texas, right over the right side again. Oh, they're really uh, just going right over the right guard and the right tackle. Anthony Phillips, a big freshman from Tulsa, and Jeff Pickett, the right guard. And he's got an injury down on the field, a Minnesota player. He's being assisted off the field, and the ball is spotted incidentally at the 49-yard line, and that's going to be about a foot short of a first down. Donovan Small, it is, who's going off. There's a golden gopher. Second down, less than a yard to go. <laughs> Gary Shepard coming out of the huddle to a wide left. He's from Odessa, Texas. Far and Tillman. And now they shore up the bone. They give it to the right half back, and it's Perry, Leon Perry, going to the 45 yard line. They're running to the strong side of the wishbone, Lindsay. They're running to the side of the tight end. You can almost see and feel that wishbone cock to the left or to the right. And they just put everybody out in front. You watch the tight end over here on the left side. Look at them all come over here. Here comes the guard. Here comes the guard out in front. They just clear up everybody. And then, of course, you get a missed tackle on the outside. And, boy, I tell you, Minnesota cannot afford those missed tackles. That was Larry Joyner who missed his tackle. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Oklahoma and Minnesota territory. And they look for the pass here now. Hickman completes it, just about to the line of scrimmage, and it's taken by Spencer Tillman, who is popped immediately by David Williams. Oh, great tackle by David Williams, a sophomore from Waukesha, Wisconsin. Now, Aikman was trying to go down deep to his wide receiver. He was on a stop and go, but he was covered. He gets a little heat.
from the inside here, and he really gets hit. Watch this. Troy Aikman, sometimes a quarterback, has to pay for to play in those glory positions. <laughs> they complete the pass for a loss of a foot. Second down and 10 yards to go. The officials in conference there at the ball. Referee said, let's wind it up and go. That's time remaining in the quarter. With the clock running down to three, two, one. I don't know if they'll get it off. Well, they did. Tillman's got the ball, and Tillman gets to the 38-yard line. And time has run out in the quarter. At the end of the first quarter, the score is Oklahoma 3, Minnesota nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Portions of tonight's game are brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick's. Lindsay, I think if, after you look at the first quarter play, if you're Barry Switzer, you say, well, looks like the defense picked up where they left off last year. They're playing a great football game, and offensively, we only put three points on the board, but you almost get a feel that this team's going to break it. Don't you feel that way? I mean, it, they're almost one tackle from breaking. Third and three at the 38-yard line. Right at the first down marker. They'll take a look at this one. They may have picked it up. Leon Perry carried the ball. May have got it. Deuce Bobbick was in for the tackle. And now let's go back to the studio. SMU starting to break things open as Jeff Adkins finds an opening on this right side. Breaks a little tackle. Carries it in for the score, making it SMU 21, TCU 7. Back to you, Lindsay. All right, and right here, Oklahoma is leading by a score of 3 0. They have it first and 10 at the Minnesota 34 yard line early in the second quarter. It's it back to the cross the 30 yard line and uh, down to the 27 yard line. Deuce Bobbick was in there on the tackle. Deuce Bobbick made a good play. He was blocked right at the Atlanta scrimmage, fought off the block. Made a de desperation tackle. There's the first first quarter stats. Oklahoma, eight first downs, 127 yards rushing. And Spencer Tillman is limping a little bit, Lindsay. I think he pulled a hamstring. Looked like it the way he was feeling in back of the thigh. Looked that way. That's Tillman who carried the ball, and he has pulled up lame here. First quarter stats, seven carries, 73 yards, averaging over 10 yards a pop. It'll be second and three at the 27-yard line as Tillman goes off. Here's another replay. Let's see if we can pick up where he pulled it. Boy, they'll grab that hamstring right away when they do. There's Desbobic. Nice play by Desbobic to knock him down, get him off balance. He had his leg and... And we see Spencer Tillman averaging 4.9 yards per carry, 14 touchdowns. Second down, three yards to go for the Sooners of Oklahoma at the 27-yard line of Minnesota. They send Derek Shepard out to a wide left. Troy Aikman's the quarterback. Aikman's got the ball. He's still got it. And he's at the 20-yard line. First and 10. And McIntosh was the first man to get to him. Well, the big sophomore from Henrietta, Oklahoma, makes a nice move here running the counter option. Here it comes, right into your living room. And he... Cuts back inside. Gets about eight yards for the first down. He's got 21 yards rushing now as a quarterback. There's Tillman getting attention from the training staff along the sideline. First and 10 for Oklahoma at the Minnesota. 20-yard line. Heading back to the inside again. And it's taken down to the 16-yard line, carried by Leon Perry. Gain of four makes it second and six. Yeah, he's the biggest of all the running backs for Oklahoma as far as the tailback and running back position. He's a freshman from Orlando. Take a look at the little counter play off the left side. Number 46, Doug Mueller, made a nice play in that Minnesota defense. Second and six, Oklahoma at the Minnesota 16. Oklahoma leading 3 nothing. Shepard's on a wide left. Backs in the bone. to the fullback. It's taken into the 11-yard line. That was Earl Johnson from Dallas, Texas. 
192 pounder Steve Thompson from Aurora, Illinois made the stop. Another big third down coming up for that Minnesota defense. We take a look at Barry over on the sidelines, and here you see the plays being signaled in to uh, Oklahoma's sophomore quarterback as Barry shouting instructions. Third and about one and a half. Big play coming here. Steele is in there now. A sell it is. yard line it was Perry carrying and it depends on where they mark it where they mark it I think he got the first down I think he did too although it was good defense uh, regardless uh, Lindsay this was very good defense at the point here comes that power football from the wishbone off the right side the guard and everybody's there watch Leon Perry where he had the foot his body was at the 10 yard line I think they made a good spot fans don't agree here they're gonna measure for the possible first down so take a look as they bring out the chain. Mueller was the man who made the hit. They'll extend it here. There it is. First and ten. That's the 11th first down for Oklahoma. No first downs yet for Minnesota. And actually, again, I say that if this Minnesota defense, if we take a look at Lou Holtz, if they can get out of here, Lindsay, with giving up maybe another field goal, that is a moral victory right in this drive. We have word now from the sideline that Tillman suffered a slight pull in the right thigh and should be back. First and goal at the 10-yard line for Oklahoma. And one of those backs on the outside with all that speed. Keeper by Aikman. Got to the seven-yard line. It was Steve Thompson who made the hit. Second well, and goal. They, they ran it back into the short side of the field. Now, you see where the ball, it's on the right hash mark, so they don't have too much room to run this option over here to the weak side. Now, Aikman goes back inside, and a nice defensive play by Steve Thompson, a junior from Aurora, Illinois, makes a nice play. Second down and goal to go at the seven-yard line. The Sooners of Oklahoma are driving. Double tight end, Lynn. Our football here. The left halfback is cheated back to the right. Perry, Perry to the five-yard line. They were cheating to the right. Anthony Burke made the stop from Minnetonka, Minnesota. They're cheating on that. If you can catch a left halfback here, you see him a little bit deep. That's a little tip-off so far. He's been there three times, and they've run to the right side every time. Third and goal at the five-yard line for Oklahoma. Dick Collins is in there now at the right half. Shepard's going out into a wide left here. Minnesota fans are loud. Johnson diving to the one-yard line, but did not get in. So it'll be fourth down. Earl Johnson hands it off to the up back. Did he get in? A little bit short. Let's see what it is. Fourth down coming now, and Oklahoma apparently is going to go for it. Some shock troops being sent in by Lou Holtz defensively. The referee says this is an official timeout for the moment. He's going to measure. They're going to measure. They can't make a first down, Lindsey. The ball, uh, was the last first down was just outside the 10 yard line. Just so. out, right. It all depends. That ball's inside the one-yard line, so this is going to be close. Lou Holtz is very interested. You saw him along the yeah, sideline. I think line. it's going to be a little short. Yeah, about football and a half short. Yeah, that's it. Fourth down coming up. They're going to go for it. Here comes the play in from Barry Switzer. Well, they've made most of the yardage so far, Lindsay. Right behind the right side, Jeff Pickett and Anthony Phillips. Let's see if they go back over there. Minnesota defense has countered with three more defensive linemen in that final. Fourth down and goal to go at the one-yard line. Perry, Johnson, and Stell are the three back from the boat. I don't know how they can hear the signals down there. This place is very, very loud. Uh-oh. I didn't get that. Did not get that. It's touchdown touchdown 
touchdown on a delayed call. It is touchdown. Well, his first effort, he didn't get in there. He looked like he was stopped short, and then Earl Johnson was awarded the touchdown. Let's take a look at it. Now watch, number five. He's the fullback in the wishbone. Here he goes. Up. And from this angle, we cannot tell where the football was. It looked like he got hit right at the line of scrimmage. You really can't tell from our vantage point on that replay, but he was awarded the touchdown. Those referees are right on the spot. They're looking parallel right directly down the line of scrimmage. Inversion attempt coming out last year will boot. Holding his pickers. And it's good. And so the Sooners of Oklahoma have gone out in front by a score of 10 to nothing, and we'll be right back. Here's another look at that touchdown, and you can see by this angle, Earl Johnson does get in. Here he goes up and over, he gets hit. Now there's the goal line, and you see he, he just stretches his body out, and the ball was over. Good call. So Oklahoma is leading it by a score of 10 to nothing, and now it's gonna be Todd Thompson kicking it off from the 40-yard line. Rocky Gaylord has dropped back, center deep to field it for Minnesota. Nine minutes, 51 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Indoors at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Deep. Touchback. It'll be put in play first and ten at the 20 yard line. So now, the Golden Gophers get the football. And for our report, let's go once again to Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins in the studio. Here are some updates of some scores. Mike North has 17 out of 22, two touchdowns for Kansas. Thurman Thomas has three touchdowns for Oklahoma State. Arkansas with a big lead over New Mexico and Florida by one touchdown leading Mississippi State. Updates at halftime. First and 10, Minnesota at the 20-yard line. Ricky Foggy, the quarterback, handing it off. Taking up there for about three yards. It's going to be second down and seven yards to go at the 23. Buck carried on the last play there is the scoring drive. Took six minutes and 49 seconds, and Johnson scored on a one-yard plunge. Uh, Lou Holtz has got to have this offense uh, pick up a few first downs, Lindsay. They have yet to pick up the first downs. They've kind of collared Foggy. They're forcing him back inside. They're trying to not let that great young quarterback get to the outside where he can pick up those big yardage. Second down play coming now. Foggy with the ball. Make the pitch. Pop as he approached the line of scrimmage, lost about a yard as Ricky Dixon made the hit. See, one great thing that defense does, it plays against the wishbone so much in practice, and it's rated number one against the run last year. They got nine starters, but look at this defense. Look how it converges on the quarterback. Look at the pursuit here, and watch Ricky Dixon, number 29, make a great tackle. Boy, that is great pursuit. Third down and seven yards to go. It's spotted at the 23. quarterback he's got the football incomplete at the 32 yard line intended for Valdez Baylor Derek White made the hit there he's from Lubbock Texas and again no first down that could have been caught fourth down coming up the punting unit has come on Adam Kelly is in to do the kicking dropping back to Derek Shepard in tandem with him will be Sonny Brown who is upfield about 10 12 yards Scott Goulden's in to make the snap. Shepard at the 36. Watch out, Woody, to the 45, to the 50, 45, and 40, 35, and down to the 31 yard line. Shepard returned it to the 31, 40 yard kickoff return, a kick return. We'll be back in a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Derek Shepard's punt return has given Oklahoma the ball now at the 31-yard line of Minnesota first down and 10 yards to go. The Sooners are leading by a score of 10-0 and in an excellent field position here. The one setback now. Nagman gives it off to that setback who is Lydell Carr. Boy, Larry Joyner popped the leather. Uh, Mr. Holtz told us this morning, boy, you'll like the way this kid plays. He just gives it 210%. Larry Joyner, not, 
not that big guy I was telling you about. He's only six foot, 200 pounds, and he plays defensive left end, and he does hit you. Second and seven at the 28-yard line now for Oklahoma. Lee Morris is in there now. Number 84, a wide receiver. Thompson. He's trying to go outside. He was trying to go outside. And I think he had a man open on the left if he would have just stayed in the pocket a little bit longer, Lenz. But he just feels that he can get around to the left side and pick up some yardage. And Steve Thompson makes a diving shoestring tackle. Good, good tackle. Third and 11 at the 32-yard line now. Big third down play, and they send Derek Shepard to a wide left. Double That's wing. Aikman. And it's incomplete and should have been intercepted at the 15 yard line. Well, his man was so wide open out on the left. Derek Shepard, the Matt junior, Martinez. was so wide open, Lindsay, over on the left. I don't know what happened to Troy Aikman here. He threw it right to the safety man. Now we can get over now. Watch this man over to the right over in the screen. He is wide open. Mr. Shepard is wide open. Had a little pressure on him, but he just hung in there a little bit too long. His receiver's open. Here's Larry Joyner. It was Matt Martinez, the defender back there. So on fourth down, they're going to go for a 49-yard field goal attempt here. Tim Lasher will attempt it. Sonny Brown is in the hole. A 49-yard attempt. It's long enough. No good, no good. Wide is hit and bounded away. So it's going to be put in play first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Field goal attempt is no good. Oklahoma's leading 10-0, and we'll be right back. They're whooping it up at the Metrodome here now on behalf of the Minnesota team. The ball goes over, of course, at the line of scrimmage, so it's first and 10 at the 32 for Minnesota. First and 10 at their own 32. They've only got 23 yard question. Oh Pitched it to the halfback, Valdez Baylor, and he was popped immediately. Just as he got the ball, it was Jeff Tupper. Jeff Tupper, we take a look at Tony Casillas in the middle. Jeff Tupper playing left tackle. He, nobody blocks him at all, and you can see they didn't block Casillas either, and he comes in to help. But Jeff uh, Tupper was there first. Second and 15. Here are scores now. Kansas 17, Florida State 10 in the third quarter. That's somewhat of a surprise. And Florida, Florida 27, Mississippi State 20 in the third quarter. Right here it is 10-0. Oklahoma leading Minnesota in the second quarter. Boggy's pass is incomplete. Tried to get it to Ed Penn. It'll be third and 15. He's hanging there. I think he's showing a lot of poise. He's only a sophomore, Mr. Foggy, and he's having a hard time moving this offense. They've yet to put, pick up a first down, Lindsey. And of course, you're going against one of the great defenses in college football. He's had a few men open. He's one out of four in the passing department, and he's a much better quarterback than this. Ed Penn comes out of the ball game. Valdez Baylor comes back in. That is for Minnesota. This place going to go up for grabs when they make a first down, I think. Third and 15. This defense only gave up, what, 68 yards average rushing a game last year to rank number one in the country. Foggy has the ball. Try the quarterback draw and goes out of bounds on the far side at the 35-yard line. Dixon and Glenn ran him out. That, Lindsay, that quarterback draw is working, but it's they're calling it when they've got third and 18, and they pick up 10 on it, and they usually come up short. Here it is again, quarterback draw. He goes around the right side, but he had so many yards to pick up. He picks up a nice gain of about nine yards, but he needed 18. So the punting unit comes in on fourth down. Adam Kelly to do the punting. And Derek Shepard has dropped back deep to field it for Oklahoma. High trajectory. Shepard at the 21-yard line. And he returned it to the 29. So it's still Oklahoma leading by 10. We'll be back in just a moment, and this is Turner Network Television. At 
the Metrodome with the inflated roof here at Minneapolis, Minnesota. As soon as Oklahoma have the ball first and 10 at their own 29-yard line, they're leading 10 nothing. Five minutes, 46 seconds left to play in the first half. Handing it off to Earl Johnson, and he struggles up to the 33-yard line. He picked up four. It'll be second and six, and Larry Joyner when it made the first hit. You know, if you're Lou Holtz, you've got to be kind of proud of this young Minnesota defense. Uh, this is nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, they only trail by 10 points, Lindsey. Their offense has just been non-existent. They have yet to make a first down, and that's where their problem lies. Defensively, they played pretty good. Second down play coming here now for the Sooners. They've sent Derek Shepard from Odessa, Texas to the far right. Run it up the middle, and it's taken by Leon Perry of Orlando, Florida, and he was stopped just short of the 40-yard line by Donovan Small, along with Nigeria. Boy, they come at you, don't they? Head offensive line. They pop off that football, and they block people. It's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Both the tackles go over 270. Mark Hudson's 280 on the left side. Phillips, the freshman, 275. The guards average about 270, Lindsay. 6'2", 266 pounds for Mr. Pope. And 6'1", 275 pounds for Jeff Pickett. Then they got a small center. Simpson's only 255 pounds. <laughs> Oklahoma out of the wishbone now. over there to Patrick Collins as Troy Aikman didn't get rid of it cleanly. Yeah, that's what they want to do. They want to put pressure on that wishbone and cause a mix-up in the flip. And here it is. Here's the fakes it to the fullback. See, he gets popped real good. It was just a poor pitch by Mr. Aikman out to his running back. Lost five. Second down play coming down. The opening game of the season for the Sooners of Oklahoma. Shepard got it and was hit immediately at the 49-yard line. Well, that's his first completion to his receiver downfield. His first pass was completed on a little screen pass, if you remember. And Derek Shepard's been open on almost every time. There's that little turn in. He's wide open right at midfield. And a good pitch this time by Aikman's right on the money. 13-yard pickup, but a yard short of a first down. So it's going to be third down and one yard to go. It's actually spotted just in advance of the 48. Johnson and Collins are the backs in the wishbone. Let's see if they give it to that big Earl Johnson in their fullback. There they do. And he doesn't get it. Earl Johnson was off. They're going to unsack him and uh, spot the ball, and it looks to be about a foot short. Now let's, panic made the hit. now let's see what Barry does. Is he going to punt it? Yes, sir. Yes, they're going to punt it. He's leading by 10 points with 3 minutes, 13 seconds left. That's defense did the job. The hand is for the defense of the Golden Gophers. They need a big play. They need to break an offensive run or uh, pass, and that young man could break it if he gets a little running room. He's got great quickness. Gaylord. Mike Winchester will do the punting. Rocky Gaylord, they call him. San Diego. Gaylord moves up, takes it at the 16-yard line. Runs into one of his own men, and he's pinned at the 15. Pinned hard. So they'll start first and 10. This telecast is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Big Ten Conference. Any publication, rebroadcast, or retransmission of pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big Ten and Turner Broadcasting is prohibited. First and 10. It's spotted just in advance of the 15-yard line. Minnesota in possession now. Couch and Gaylord alive. Ricky Foggy is the quarterback. Nothing on that one. They left it on the ground and he got nothing. It was Pudgy Abercrombie carrying and he was hit by Jeff Tupper. Second and 10. 
Coming up at halftime, the University of Minnesota Golden Gopher Marching Band. We'll have a studio report to bring you up to date on football information from all across the country. And we'll have, ha have highlights of first half play. Hope you'll stay with us. Second down play coming now for Minnesota. 2.06 on the clock remaining in the first half. Going into their style wishbone. They do. That's Foggy. Just picking his way for not very much. Up to the 19-yard line, and it's uh, Bosworth who made the tackle. They only had one receiver out, Lindsey. That was Rocky Gaylord. His clock ticks down the last two minutes of the first, first half. And it's pretty tough. You think they're worried about that defense? They keep everybody in but one receiver. So that's uh, really telling you some what respect they got for that defense. Third down and seven yards to go. Third and seven for Minnesota. And we repeat, no first down yet. Hoggy tries a little trouble, and uh, it, it's a penalty marker on the field as it was carried by Kevin Starks up to the 20-yard line. He's a tight end. Check out the penalty. Tom Quinn, the referee. Got a little shovel pass play. Holding against Minnesota will be declined. They'll have to punt. Barry Switzer along the sideline, the head coach at Oklahoma. Or maybe, maybe they might uh, gamble here and go ahead and let them have another third down at it. And put them back eight yards. Right guard, left guard, left guard. Holding. Offense. Decline. Yeah, decline, sure. Decline, and the punting unit comes on. With this kind of defense, though, you could gamble that way. They're so good. You know, third and fourth and eight, or third and 18, and put them back another uh, seven or eight yards. Adam Kelly's in to do the punting. Derek Shepard has dropped deep for Oklahoma. Sonny Brown in tandem in advance of him. Shepard at the 33, at the 35, at the 40. Shepard at the 45 and up to the 48-yard line. Tomorrow night and every Sunday night at 10.05 Eastern Time, the sports page will announce the Super Football Saturday Player of the Week. Last week's pick was Boston College quarterback Sean Holleran. That's on the sports page at 10.05 on most of these stations. Right here, we have 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Oklahoma's leading 10-0. And they got their timeouts left. And now we might see a little double wing formation and let Troy Aikman throw the football. They've only got a 10 to nothing lead. And they have started with the football, Lindsay, this whole first half in fine field position. They've had it all. Have it at their own 47 here. Troy Aikman has quarterbacked them throughout so far, and Aikman has the football. And he pops it. And it's incomplete at the 35-yard line. The receivers and the quarterback are not in sync. They're either running the wrong patterns. That was thrown on the wrong side of the receiver. He was running straight down the field. And I think Troy Aikman thought he was just going to hook up or turn outside here. Here you come off play action. Now watch the receiver coming down the sideline. Lee Mart. He's wide open, Lenz. And you see, there's the turn-in man's wide open, too. And he throws it to the outside. So they, they just were not in sync. Second and 10 at the 47-yard line for Oklahoma. Aikman has the ball. This time completes it over the middle. To the 45, to the 43-yard line to Keith Jackson. 241-pound tight end. Struggling to get to the first down sticks there, and they'll take a look. One thing about the college players, they, they're trying to get the extra yards, which I love. They don't try to get out of bounds to stop the clock. They just put their head down and go forward. Now, that'll stop the clock till they move the chains. First down. As soon as they get it spotted, they'll wind it up. That's the 42-yard line. That's 13 first downs for Oklahoma. The clock has started. 40 seconds remain and a half. Aikman again looking to throw, and he does. 33-yard line by Damon Stell. See, didn't get out of bounds. Could have got out of bounds very easily and stopped the clock. Now they're going to have to take a timeout. It'll be at the 33-yard line. They do take the timeout to stop the clock for 28 seconds showing. That's remaining in the first half. Switzer's record. 
against non-conference opponents. 35, 10, and 3. We well, were talking about the great tradition of these two schools. You know, here at the University of Minnesota, they have retired only two jerseys. Number 54, which was worn by tailback Bruce Smith in the pre-World War II years. He was Minnesota's only Heisman Trophy winner. And director of athletics Paul Giel was runner-up for the Heisman in 1953. And the number 72, worn by the great Bronco Nagurski, has also been retired. Nagurski was an All-American at tackle and at fullback. Or anywhere else they wanted to put him. <laughs> what Red Grange tell you? He thought he was the best football player he's ever seen? Red Grange said he was the best football player he had ever seen. He said Cal Hubbard was playing for Green Bay one day, and Grange said he was in the up-back position. Bronco Nagurski right there. And he said, Hubbard said to Grange, look, don't bother me this time. I want that Ukrainian. <laughs> and so Grange said, I was easy to do business with. I got out of the way. And he says, the worst crash I ever heard. And he said, Hubbard staggered back by me and said, I've had all I wanted, that Ukrainian. <laughs> First and 10 now at the 33-yard line. Double wing. Let's see if they get the first down. They're going to go upstairs. He got hit again, too. He's dropped on his back. Troy Aikman getting up a little slowly there. 23 seconds on the clock. Second and 10 at the 33. Bruce Holmes put the pressure off on his linebacker position. Now, Mr. Aikman's going to have to learn to have a little touch on those long passes. And he's going to have to tie him up on a string a little bit more. Threw that one way too strong. Threw it on a line at the line drive. And you've got to tie those 40-yard passes up a little bit. Give him a chance to run under it. Clock starts here on the snap. Aikman, short drop. Incomplete. Had a little pop pass right over the middle to Keith Jackson. It'll be third and ten at the 33. Bruce Holmes, the linebacker. Again, Holmes breaks it up, and he almost gets an interception. Little play action to the fullback. Got to look around. Look at that big Paul, Bruce Holmes, number 88, against number 88, Keith Jackson. Third down and ten yards to go. Oklahoma's leading 10-0, 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Indoors at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Trent Tripp is coming into the ballgame now at uh, Nose Guard. They're going to try a 50-yard field goal. Tim Lasher will try a 50-yarder. Short. No good. The ball goes over at the line of scrimmage. 14 seconds on the clock. In the case of the short. So Minnesota gets it down. Look at the reaction now. He's got a funny stance. He leans into it and they think he's got it far enough you can see the reaction he thinks he's made it and he look up oh, nope are you kidding he says <laughs> first and ten out to 33 well that's frustrating i tell you you think you made it you look up you know, you're waiting for the referee to put these arms up and they go uh-uh argue with the pitch Look at this boy to the 29-yard line. It was Abercrombie carrying. It was Casillas. Oh, he got across the line of scrimmage. Made the tackle, but I think he got a hold of the face mask. Hockey stop with nine seconds. Might as well try to throw the home run once. It is face mask. There it is again. Let's see if we can pick up Mr. Casillas. Here he comes. Nobody even touches him. There it is. You see the right arm in there. Ooh. No, that wasn't Casillas. Casillas was on the tackle. Everybody stop hollering. I'll tell you, it's Kevin Murphy on the... Ball is advanced to the 39-yard line where it's first down and five yards to go. Seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds, four seconds. They leave this one on the ground, and it is taken there by Ed Penn, and he got it out to the 40-yard line, and time ran out. So there it is. Time has run out in the first half, and at the end of the first half, the score is Oklahoma 10.
football team, but Minnesota was expecting to do a little bit better than that. In fact, Minnesota defensively has played pretty good. They've only given up one touchdown, and you know, Lindsay, uh, we've seen a lot of games like this, and one turnaround, one big play, and Minnesota's right back in. Let's take a look at the first touchdown. This is Earl Johnson, the big junior from Dallas, and he gets over from one yard out. Now, that end zone shot, you really didn't get a vantage point. Let's take another shot, and you can really see it here. Watch him. He goes up. He gets hit right there. Now watch him extend his body, and you can see the referee right there had a perfect spot at the touchdown. Well, Paul, you're Lou Holtz now, and you're in the locker room at halftime. What are you thinking? What are you trying to figure out? Well, I'll tell you, he's got a young football team. I would uh, praise the guys for a good first half. They're only behind 10 to nothing. Offensively, they didn't do too much. Ricky Foggy, they really controlled him. But defensively, I would praise my Minnesota Gophers and say, listen, boys, we held the number one team in the country to only one touchdown. Let's get something going offensively. We'll be right back in this football game. You're Barry Switzer. What are you telling your sooners? Well, you tell defensively boys let's play the same kind of game they didn't give up a first down the whole first half they picked up where they left off and Troy Aikman has not really uh, relaxed yet at quarterback the big six foot three kid has got a lot of talent Lindsay and it's going to take a while for him to have a little experience they lost Spencer Tillman he hasn't been back he's got a pulled hamstring muscle but they've got enough running backs they've got almost 200 yards rushing but they've they had great field position the whole first half and still only made one score. So we'll be getting away with the second half when we come back. This is Turner Network Television. You'll recall that at the outset of festivities that uh, Minnesota won the toss and waved it off. And so now Minnesota gets to receive to start the second half and Oklahoma will kick off. There are the first half stats. Todd Thompson will do the kicking off. That big and goose egg. Let's see that big goose egg is a story. No first downs. And let's see if they can get a return going here. Rocky Gaylord is deep. Yes. Gaylord, right for the sideline at the 10 to the 15 and stopped at the 16 yard line. So that is where the Golden Gophers of Minnesota start first and 10 at their own 16. There are first half possessions of Oklahoma, Minnesota, and Minnesota has the ball now. Ricky Foggy is the quarterback for the Golden Gophers. Buck and Baylor are in the I formation. Foggy. Trying to get it out to Couch. It's incomplete. Second and ten. We have a report from the locker room now that Tillman is out for the rest of the ball game for Oklahoma. Yeah, it's got a pulled hamstring and of course very realizes they got they're very, very deep at running back. I know they'd like to have him in here for the second half, Lindsay, but Maybe if they can get by without him in the second half, he'll be ready for next week. Greg Otto's in there tight end now for Minnesota. Second and 10 at their 16-yard line. They are in their version of the wishbone now. Foggy. Rocks it up and incomplete. Leading Gaylord. Rocky Gaylord. Well, it looks like at halftime that Lou Holtz has decided to try to air it out. Let's go upstairs. We haven't had any luck running the football at all. We get a look at Barry Switzer over on the sidelines, Lens. And Lou Holtz is right. I think he knows he's not going to be able to run the football. Anybody's going to run, and it's going to be Ricky Foggy. He's going to have to run off of a broken play and maybe a pass or a rollout. That's the only way you're going to look like you're going to beat this defense. You're not going to beat it inside. Couch has come out of the huddle to a wide right. Ricky Foggy, the quarterback. Third down and 10 yards to go. Foggy has the ball. And it's complete. Taking it across the 40. Kevin Stark. Devin Sharks gets it to the 47 yard line. A 31 yard pickup and Minnesota's first first down of this ball game. Ricky Foggy picks up his big tight end. He had caught two passes in the first two games and he gets pretty good protection. And Foggy lays it right over the middle. A beautiful pitch. And the big tight end picks up 31 yards, gets almost to midfield. First, first down of the ball game for Minnesota, and they have it at their own 47-yard line. And that makes the Minnesota fans happy here in the Metrodome. 
Augie got rid of it that time. Advance to the 50 by Puck, David Puck. Casillas made the tackle. One of the few seniors on this Minnesota team, David Puck, a senior from Cedar Rapids. That's a that's a big game, Lindsay. Game two and a half, three yards, right? It is that. <laughs> Until he came upon Casillas. That's if, a, if you talk to Barry Switzer, as we did this morning, when he gets to Casillas, he drags out all the superlatives. He said next to Leroy Seaman, he's the best I've had here. Leroy Selman. Let's do this. Buggy now with a late pitch. Oh, out of bounds down there, about the 40 yard line. But there's a penalty marker on the play. Valdez Baylor. Valdez Baylor, the other senior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Got the option, and that's what you got to do. You got to get Foggy out there. This is going to be called back holding. And Holt said, Paul, we got to play an error free football. We cannot make mistakes. And here it is, their second first down, and get caught for holding. It's a big turnaround instead of having the first down at the 40. They're going to have a first down almost on their own 40 yard line. All the way back to the 42. Second down. Second down and about 16. Like at their own 42. Foggy. And Third coming up. Oh, they. Every time he rolls out, he gets popped. And I'm talking about the quarterback, Ricky Foggy. Watch him off of play action. He's trying to get it to the outside here. Makes a little fake. Now he looks like he's going to get some room, but uh-uh, here comes a white jersey. Oh, they have really put the pressure on him. And tough, it's tough to throw an accurate pass <laughs> when you have to throw it on the back, on your back. It is that. Here's a third and long coming down. Couch coming out of the head to the right side and Rocky Gaylord to the left side. We got five defensive backs in for Oklahoma. They're all playing his own. Foggy. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down coming up. The punting unit will come on. Sonny Brown made a move on the ball. It was intended for Craig Otto. As a penalty marker. Yep, it could be against Minnesota again for holding. Well, I tell you, that holding call really hurt it Minnesota. Is when you're playing somebody and you're three touchdown favorites and you got a first down on the 40-yard line, you get caught for holding. You haven't made but one first down. That is serious. That took them right out of this drive, Lindsay, that holding call. And now we got another holding call. Be fourth down if they decline it. A little trouble with the administration to get it all yeah. straightened out here. Well, they're taking a gamble here. They're going to take the 10 yards. Back to the 32. Instead of having fourth down, they make it third and how about a lot? They're holding on the offense. Repeat third down. About 26, third and about 26. Now you've seen uh, coaches make this kind of call. I kind of like it myself. Puts them back further and they got the best defense in the country. Why not? But you've seen the turnaround on a lot of people and somebody comes up with a miracle play and makes the first down. Third down play and Foggy has the football. And then Gamble, Gamble paid off for Oklahoma. They had a little screen set up and they just didn't perform offensively. They, they were out of sync again, and they had some running room if he could have completed it. Kevin Murphy was the man who got in there from Plano, Texas, and coming in to do the punting is Adam Kelly, and dropping back there, of course, is Shepard, Derek Shepard, to field the punt back at his own 25-yard line. He's done a good job punting, Lindsey Adam yeah. Kelly, 43.6. It's a high trajectory kick. Yes, sir. Oklahoma's leading 10 nothing. We're in the third quarter. Look at here. Get out of there. Shepard retreats to his own 14 yard line. 15. Trying to turn the corner. Goes out of bounds on the far side. Just about the 20 yard line. 
They'll start first and ten there. We'll be back in just a moment. Oklahoma has the ball first and ten at their own 20. Troy Aikman is their quarterback. They're in a wishbone. Headed back to the inside for three yards. With Leon Perry carrying to the 23, it'll be second down and seven. You know, one thing this Oklahoma team has done tonight is hold on to the football, and there's a guy who would wish that they would. You know, you've seen, as I said earlier, I think Minnesota, uh, Oklahoma has beaten itself more than other teams have beaten them over the years, especially Barry Switzer's team. He's won 82.4% of his games, the highest percentage in college football. But tonight, Oklahoma has not fumbled in. Eggman with the football. That's an old game by Larry Joyner. Well, there was two mistakes on that. A mistake by the quarterback. He didn't let the he didn't let the man out in front block for him. And you can see number 45, Lydell Carr, is saying something to his quarterback. Here comes Carr out. Now watch, he's trying to block. Now you gotta get communication here. Look, so you see quarterback got in front of the fullback. He should have waited and let Carr try to block number 20, Larry Joyner, who makes the play. Third down and seven yards to go for Oklahoma. Big third down play. Crowd is well aware of that. to Nigerian. The senior from right here in Minneapolis. Peter Nigerian and an Isaiah. Now, Oklahoma is finding it a little bit tough to run the football. Watch Nigerian fight off a block and he puts a helmet right in the numbers and puts him right on his back. So Mike Winchester's in to do the punting now. Standing at his own 10-yard line. Should, should get good field position. Rocky Gaylord is deep. Fair catch signal goes up, and he makes it at the 40-yard line. Minnesota will start first and 10 at their own 40-yard line, a 35-yard punt with no return. So now, can the Golden Gophers of Minnesota move the football from here? I think they're going to have to come off with, they can come off with one play. The first thing to do is you get these 62,000 plus just screaming their heads off. If they can come up in this series, this is the best field position they've had. Let's see the whole game to take over the football. And the law of averages, you would think, is on their side a little bit, wouldn't you? They haven't had a big play yet. Boggy brings them up. Hands it off, and they move it to the 43-yard line with Kevin Wilson, Jerry. It'll be second and seven. Let me correct myself. They had a 31-yard pitch to the big tight end. Richard Reed made the last tackle. I'd go back to that tight end over the middle again. He was wide open and see if Oklahoma has countered it and uh, maybe they might be a little bit soft in there. Kevin Starks was so wide open on that 30-yard game. Minnesota quarterback Ricky Foggy is sometimes called Vegas by his teammates. They say whenever he throws the ball, it's a gamble as to where it's going. <laughs> he's, got a good, he's got a good strong arm. Comes the option. He's got the ball and he's pinned back at the 41-yard line for a loss on the play. Daddy Jones made the tackle. Loss of two. Third and nine. See what happens. He goes down the line of scrimmage on that option. And Oklahoma is so quick. The people who are pursuing, Ricky Foggy has no idea who's coming from the backside and they're making the tackle. Third down play coming here. This Metrodome is, of course, the home of the baseball Minnesota Twins. And there was a Major League Baseball game played here. Earlier today at the Metrodome, it started this morning. Minnesota Twins beat Kansas City, as a matter of fact. Vikings, of course, play here. This place gets a lot of action, doesn't it? Doesn't it, though? Foggy with the football. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up. Now let's pause five seconds to allow local stations to identify themselves. Kelly has come in to do the putting now. Here is part of the big crowd packed and jammed in here. Sellout crowd. Some 63, 64,000 at the Metrodome. That is Kelly who's been booming punts out of here. Derek Shepard has dropped back deep, standing at his own 15 yard line. Be no return. 
return on this that's bounding around the 20 and goes out of bounds. So we'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. This is Lindsey Nelson with Paul Horning, and Oklahoma has the ball first and ten at their own 21-yard line. We're in the third quarter with 9.26 remaining, and Oklahoma's leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Troy Aikman is the quarterback. They're in the wishbone. Give it off to the fullback. Taken there by Earl Johnson up to the about 23-yard line, and Anthony Burke made the tackle. And again, we just reiterate this Minnesota defense has done a good job they trail 10 to nothing but through no fault of their own the offense hasn't been able to move the football you give this team this many chances Lindsay they're going to break one you almost feel like they're going to break a run second down play coming for Turner's and now that helps somebody move that tackle that helps 77 at Caesar Rennie well, these kids get so big today, I don't understand. 6'4", 288, this young man. <laughs> oh, Barry doesn't like it either. Stay still. Boy, they hate to see those offensive linemen move before the snap of the football. Seems like the easiest thing in the world to do, but boy, they get so anxious. Good ball. Ball start on the offense. Repeat second down. Second and 14, back at the 19-yard line. Yeah. This is what Holtz wants him to do, force him into long. Maybe this young quarterback will make an errant throw and they can pick it off. That's what they're hoping. Take it back to the 23 yard line. And with Terry Carey, defense again doing a job. Got them right where they want him. Let's see if they can keep him in the third and long now. They do. Hand it off to the right side. Leon Perry, the freshman from Orlando. And he's going nowhere. No blocking outside this time. Look at that gang tackle. Third down, about eight yards to go. Leon Perry coming up there. I don't think they're going to throw it there with the wishbone. Aikman, Aikman throwing. Shepard's got it. And he's at the 37-yard line. Oh, good move. First down. And a good call. Jim, I think it's Donan, the offensive coordinator, who's working with this young man. Now you saw a little bit of taste of his ability here. Here he goes out of the wishbone, strong right. They, they flow it to the right. He comes back. Look at this pitch. What a good arm. And he's right on the money to Derek Shepard. He's got the first down. They roll right. The whole wishbone went to the right. And he had a single man down and did a little hook pattern. Williams and Martinez made the tackle. First down and 10 yards to go at the 37. Picked up 14, Lindsey. Well, that's an important first down for Oklahoma. Go to his fullback. Got to the 40 yard line. Earl Johnson carried it. Got about three, make it second and seven. Anthony Burke made the tackle. Director of athletics at the University of Oklahoma is Wade Walker, and he was a great All American tackle in his playing days. Matter of fact, in the uh, administrative jobs, it's Paul Geal at Minnesota, great single wing tailback, and Wade Walker, a great tackle at Oklahoma. Oklahoma has had three Heisman Trophy winners in his proud football history. Billy Russell, Steve Owens, Billy Sims. Handed it off. Moved up just across the 40-yard line. Errol Johnson, the fullback. Again, Minnesota's defense. Right there. Boy, what an All-American this way was. Billy Vessels, 1950-52 to Heisman Trophy winner. Great football team. I saw him in that great game against Notre Dame Absolutely. in 1952, one of the great games in history. I tell you, I think Billy Bessels averaged about nine yards a carry in that football game, didn't he? Did indeed. I never saw anybody run a handoff like that. Third down. Oh, Third down and about eight yards to go. Joyner made the tackle. Aikman kept the ball. Joyner made the tackle, and that's going to bring up a fourth down in the punting edit. And Joyner's been all over the field. This young man weighs only 200 pounds. He's the smallest defensive man out here. Now watch it. Here he's playing the option. He gives him a little fake, and he comes back in on the quarterback. 
A nice defensive bay by Larry Joyner, a junior from Memphis. An appreciative crowd is saluting the defense of the University of Minnesota. Winchester's back to punt. Gaylord is deep to receive it. Here it is. Good kick. Barricade signal goes up. Gaylord takes it and drops it. It's at the 14-yard line, and Minnesota keeps the ball. First and 10 at the 14, and we'll be right back. It's Oklahoma 10, Minnesota nothing. Five minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the third quarter. First down and 10 yards to go for Minnesota. They have the ball at their own 14-yard line. Ricky Foggy is the quarterback, and they're in their wishbone. Foggy with the pitch. Taken out to the 20 by Gary Cow. Kevin Murphy on good. Kevin Murphy on a good move outside on the tackle. Now for a highlight, let's go to the studio. Florida State came from behind to defeat Kansas. The Seminoles are 4-0. Thurman Thomas with four touchdowns for Oklahoma State. Kerwin Bell led the Florida Gators past Mississippi State. And Grambling is leading Oregon State 14-3 at the half. Second down and four yards to go for Minnesota. They have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Foggy's a quarterback. Foggy with the ball. Hoping he could walk the tightrope, but his momentum carried him across the sideline mark. And I tell you, if his momentum had carried him out of bounds, that would have been a big play because he was hitting in the right direction there. Good pitch, second six. They picked up six yards on first down. That was their best play on first down. And this is their best gainer here. And you see Gene Rocky Gaylord almost goes upfield a little further. Picked up 13. First down, that's number two. It is, and it's at the 32-yard line. End of the wishbone now for Ricky Foggy. He still got it, and they have him back to the 30-yard line for a loss of two. Oh, this defense is really something to see, Lindsay. Everybody there is so quick. He's got great speed, and they just react to the football so well. That's Daryl Reed. He's a sophomore from Cypress, Texas. In fact, they've got seven starters on this Oklahoma team start on defense from Texas. They've got three on the offense from Texas. Six starters are from Oklahoma, both offense and defense. Gaylord comes out to the right side, couch to the left side. Foggy with the football. A handoff, and they move it out simply to the 31-yard line. It was Wilson carrying. Yep. Second 13, and they're getting along later in the ballgame. Second 13, and it's going to be awful tough for him running that inside tackle play, Lindsay. It's almost like a throwaway. You're running against such a great defense. You better just try to get something upstairs. I think Lou Holtz is pretty happy right now, Lindsay, that his team is only 10 points behind, and we have 344 to go in the third quarter. He's got to feel, you know, that one play. He's hoping one play will get us back in this. Alan Holtz in there now. For Minnesota. And it's moved simply up to the 36-yard line with yeah. Kevin Wilson carrying. I don't like that. That's just like giving up their first down. They're going to punt it. They're just keeping that field position. Adam Kelly's in to do the punting. You know, they've got to throw it in that situation, especially the last two plays. Shepard is dropping back to field the punt. There he goes, having a word with Sonny Brown, who's in tandem with him back there. Three minutes, five seconds left to play in the third quarter. Very conservative couple, last couple plays, Lindsay, and they shouldn't be conservative. Shepard at the 24 to the 25, 30, 35, the 38 yard line. So they'll start there first and 10. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Turner Network Television, home of the 1986 Goodwill Games. Opening ceremony is July 5th from Moscow. Two minutes, 51 seconds left in the third quarter. Oklahoma leading by a score of 10-0. They have the ball first and 10 at their own 38-yard line. Stop it. 
It was Mavic who made the hit. Again, this defense has kept this football team in the ball game, especially here in the second half. They've really almost dominated Oklahoma's offense. Here comes the reverse. It's executed well, but look, look at here at the pursuit in that gopher defense. That's Collins, and he takes a big loss. Second and 13 at the 35. Aikman still quarterbacking. That's Jim Donan over there with Barry Switzer, offensive coordinator, trying to get something going. Yeah. That was Carr who got the ball, and Shawna hit him immediately. Well, they're not controlling the line of scrimmage. You notice in the first half that offensive line was just really moving Minnesota back and just blowing them off the line of scrimmage. The second half is just the opposite. Minnesota's defense is controlling the line of scrimmage now. There's that number 20 again. Mr. Joyner, all 200 pounds of him, just playing his heart out. Third and 13. For the Stoners of Oklahoma. Collins and Shepard are the wide receivers. Aikman. Complete at the 49. To the 50. Keith Jackson. Had his knee down. <laughs> Keith Jackson, 14-yard pickup, first down. Big play at the 49-yard line. Look at here, though. Finally, Minnesota gets a break. Penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage. We're going to take another look here. Here it is wide open. You see his knees walk down on a little hook pattern to big Keith Jackson. They're going to bring it back. Holy. the 25 yard line Barry says you got something Jim what do you got he wants to know what the place is called yeah. holding on the offense third down see what kind of pressure put on the quarterback here third and 23 at the 25 Shepard and Collins are wide a double wing. Aikman. John Hopkins complete at the 50 and bring up fourth down. Collins intended receiver, small covering defensively. He should have. And for the defense. That's right, and they deserve it now. 62,000 plus. They're on their feet here at the Metrodome. And rightfully so. These kids have played their heart out. Over three touchdown favorites has someone told us earlier and Minnesota well, I've got to tell you Lou Holtz has got him on the right track Winchester back to the punting Rocky Gaylord deep to field he's standing at his own 28 <laughs> Barricade signal is up he makes it at the 36 now for a highlight let's go to the studio SMU's Jeff Adkins goes up and over the top on his way to his third touchdown of the evening as SMU increases its lead over Texas Christian 42 to 7. It's time to say, turn off the lights, Lindsay. You can have it. A happy group of fans here tonight. As Minnesota has the ball first and 10 at their own 36, and Ricky Foggy is still quarterbacking him. Big Ten has led the nation in football attendance for 27 straight years. By the way, Wayne Duke, the commissioner of the Big Ten, is in attendance here tonight in Minneapolis. And after the fullback, who drives it up to the 39, David Puck. Game three, it'll be second down and seven yards to go. That's time remaining in the third quarter. Tied in, Craig Otto comes onto the field. I tell you, this defense hasn't had any opening game blues, have they, Lynch? They certainly have really not. played their heart out, as Barry is well aware that this fine defense led the nation against the rush. Number two overall last year. Got nine starters back, and they're playing like Foggy with the football. Minnesota got rid of it, divested himself of the pigskin. It'll be third and seven. And he, he was lucky he got away from Daryl Reed or it would have been about a 10-yard sack. He's 
had a hard night, Ricky Foggy. Boy, they really controlled him. We've been talking about Oklahoma and Minnesota in other years, and it's almost impossible to work a Oklahoma football game without a thought of Harold Keith, who was Oklahoma's first sports information director, and he served in that post for 39 years. He was one of the great ones. 20 seconds remaining now in the third quarter. Third down. Foggy, three out of 12, Lindsay for only 50 yards. Foggy throwing and batted down. Darrell Reed got a big hand up. Fourth down coming up. Oh, what a, a defense. Now, opening night jitters have plagued the offense a little bit. Adam Kelly has come out to do the punting. Shepard has gone back deep. In advance of him is Brown. at the 22 25 30 32 well he's funky isn't he he's feisty little runner first and 10 at the 32 uh, teams yep. that play Oklahoma is gonna are gonna have to watch that young man he's gonna break a punt this year 39 yard punt return 10 yards six seconds on the clock remaining in the third quarter the ball is spotted at the 32 oh what a football player Tommy McDonald all-American national championship team 1955 all pro he'll be going into the national football foundation's hall of fame on december 3rd right. along with paul horney six seconds remaining in the third quarter and off and it's advanced to the 39 yard line by earl johnson as time runs out in the quarter so at the end of three quarters of play, the score is Oklahoma 10, Minnesota nothing. We'll be right back. Along the sideline, Mickey Hatcher, former kicker at Oklahoma, he now plays baseball for the Minnesota Twins, came to the majors with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Third and two. Well, he got close. Taken by Leon Perry, and he was stopped by Bruce Holmes. First play of the fourth quarter. Oklahoma's leading by a score of 10 nothing. It'll be third down now. And it looks to be less than a yard. At the 42. Double tight end, Keith Jackson and Barry Hill are in there. Time of possession right there. A double. He got it. At least I think he got it. Troy Aikman kept the football. Jeff Pickett was the man he was following. Well, if you're an Oklahoma fan, and when you watch a game like this where an Oklahoma offense has the football twice as much as the other team, it's usually a blowout. Oklahoma has not averaged at 10 yards and 8 yards of play offensively running the football. This Minnesota defense has just been outstanding, especially here in the second half. First and 10, Oklahoma. They have the ball at their own 43. And Estelle across the 50 into the 48 yard line. That's the biggest game, second half running the football. Small and Holmes made the stop. Damon Stell, a sophomore from Oklahoma City. Second down and one. As soon as of Oklahoma, where Bud Wilkinson was head coach for 17 seasons. All American right here, too. I think you honest to Minnesota. Played guard and blocking back. the football and he was popped. It was Anthony Burke. Minnetonka right here in Minnesota, boys. And you, this is a real good tackle. He plays off the left tackle's block of Mark Hudson. He comes right in and he gets a real good beat on the running back there and puts him right down. He's got 280 pounds going after that tackle and then it was a little mismatch. Third and one. Oklahoma at the Minnesota 48-yard line. 
It hasn't been easy, has it, Lindsey? Always Oklahoma offense. They get the first and ten at the 45-yard line with Leon Perry carrying. Stop was made by Dutrout. And one great thing offensively that Barry Switzer is going to have to be pleased about is these running backs. They have held on to the football. No fumbles tonight. They made one little bad pitch uh, around the left side at, right at the feet of one of the running backs. Aikman threw a bad pitch, but they recovered it. So opening game of the season for Oklahoma. Minnesota came in with previous victories over Wichita State and Montana. This afternoon Notre Dame lost to Purdue 35 to 17 and Purdue will be here against Minnesota next Saturday night and we'll be right here. We'll be here. I'm looking forward to seeing that quarterback Jimmy Everett fought he threw for what 370 against Notre Dame. Bounced incomplete. Aikman's incomplete pass intended for Patrick Collins. Second and ten at the 45. Here's the Big Ten today. He killed everybody, didn't he? Well, yes, sir. He certainly had a big day. How about Indiana? Three and oh, wow. And Michigan wiped out Maryland 20 to nothing. We had Maryland last week. Right. Ohio State beating Washington State. Second down, 10 yards to go. Oh, my Notre Dame. Second loss already. Aikman's got the ball. Back at the 41. Ball was shaking loose, but I think it has been blown dead up at the 41 yard line. Boy, Bruce Holmes, I tell you, he almost kills Aikman here. I tell you, Mr. Aikman for a sophomore, he's going to say, I don't, I know this is our first game and my first real action. Look at here. Does he get popped? -hoo -hoo, look at that. I tell you, he's a tough kid. He gets right up, too. Bruce Holmes and Deuce Bobby. At the 41 yard line, third and six. I tell you, he's a tough kid. Mr. Aitman, he hung right in it. He's been hit four or five times, Lindsay. A lot of quarterbacks I don't think would have got more. Aitman's got the ball. He got to the 36 yard line. Good athletic ability there. They got close to the first down. I think they'll go far to even if they're short. It'll you be see Barry, one. Barry Switzer running down there to see how close it is. Watch this now. A missed block on Peter Nigerian forces Aikman up the middle and he gets popped in the back again. Pretty good. Now the next play is coming in from the sideline. Fourth and one at the 36 and a half. Barry Switzer pacing along the sideline. Shepard came out of the game. The crowd is rising to the occasion, trying to exhort the Minnesota defense. They got the first down with yards to spare. At the 33-yard line, it was Damon Stell up and over. Now uh, we go right down the line of scrimmage. You see the blocking. Watch, watch Stell up and over. Good blocking the point of attack, and everybody was kind of cleared away. And Stell just dove over there for the first down. First and ten. It's outside the 32-yard line. Look at that. First downs. I think they got two first downs. I think it did too. Yes, sir. Sure they do. Only two. Penalty marker thrown. Procedure against Oklahoma. I tell you, this is perfect for Minnesota defense. They're trying to. Dead ball. Ball starts. On the offense. Repeat first down. First down 15 at the 37. The turnings have been wide open all night long for Oklahoma. They're getting this double wing and they're in the kind of a, a slot wishbone here. Shepard's back in the bargain. The turnings have been wide open. He's off this formation. Aikman. In 
incomplete. Second and 15 at the 37. Send it to Perry. He's rushing a little bit. He's got to take a little off the football when he throws those little screens. Little flat passes or touch passes. Take a little steam off of it. Give that guy a chance to catch it if it's not a perfect pass. Howard comes into the game defensively now for Minnesota. Aikman. And it's complete. Taken there by Shepard. He couldn't find a place to turn the corner, so we'll see where it's going to be marked. I think around the 25. Uh, two exact plays. Martinez made a tackle. Aikman now 7 out of 16, 67 yards. Now, this play shows you the uh, inexperience. The last play had a man open the flat through it too hard. This time he sees him on that turn in, and boy, he puts it right on the money. That's Derek Shepard on a turn in. He gets hit by Doug Mueller there. And he gets gang tackled, and they got the first down again. He's still down, Shepard is, and he's getting attention from the training staff now. That is Shepard. Ball is marked at the 21 yard line, first and 10. Well, and he looks like he is hurt pretty good. So Oklahoma leads 10 nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. <laughs> Oklahoma 10, Minnesota nothing with nine minutes, 54 seconds left to play. Shepard is okay, left the field under his own power, and Lee Morris has replaced them. First and 10, Oklahoma at the Minnesota 21 yard line. Slot right. Aikman gave it to Johnson. Stacked up there at about the 17 by Bruce Holmes. They're also eating up a lot of time off this clock. They got the football back with about 12 and a half minutes on that clock. And it's down to nine minutes and 20 seconds. So they've eaten three minutes off that clock in this drive. Second and six at the 17. Shepard's in a wide left. Back in the ball game. Inside the 10. A little subtle fumble. Stell. Stell carried it down there, and Oklahoma retains possession at the seven yard line. Boy, Stell showed good quickness getting to the hole. He coughs up the football. Boy, he was stepping. Looked like he. I think he might have thought he was going to score on the play. Got a little bit anxious, coughs it up. And good recovery by Oklahoma to retain possession. There it is again. Watch Stell. Damon Stell makes a good step. You see that football? There it is. He wasn't hit. He just lost control of it. First and goal at the seven-yard line. Keith Jackson was the man on the ball. Aikman, incomplete. Second and goal at the seven, intended for Keith Jackson. Incompletion stops the clock with 8.33 remaining to be played. has quarterback Oklahoma throughout this ball game. Shepard comes out of the huddle to a wide left. Perry Johnson Stell of the backs. Yeah, they have that value. Defensive. Outside the five, Nigerian stopping Earl Johnson. They've just been on the field too long, Lindsay. I tell you, this defense, regardless of what happens, there's that Earl Johnson, that junior from Dallas again. And I tell you, defensively, again, Peter Nigerian, senior from Minneapolis right here. And Johnson is shaking up a little bit. But he's, he's getting okay. help from the training staff. That's Johnson, the fullback. It's going to be third and goal at the six-yard line. Lydell Carr comes back in. Carr is from Enid, Oklahoma. Third down play coming here. And the right. 
right in front of the Oklahoma fans over there. And they're stirring them up over there. There's about two or 3,000 Oklahoma fans here for this football game at least. They're sending in the field goal unit. And Lou Holtz is pretty happy. He knows he needs two scores to win anyway. So this is playing right into Minnesota's hands. I tell you, 13 point lead with this defense, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a big lead, isn't it? It is. I tell you. Tim Lasher has come in now to do the kicking, and Sonny Brown has had to do the holding. It's going to be a 21 yard attempt from the hash mark left. Three-pointer is good, and so the score is now Oklahoma 13 and Minnesota nothing, 7-18 to play, and we'll be right back. It'll, it'll be Ty Thompson kicking it off from the 40-yard line, and that's Gaylord back there deep to field it. Center deep for Minnesota. Seven minutes, 18 seconds left to play in the game. Oklahoma leading by a score of 13 and a I would think there's any chances to win a football game <laughs> in the last seven minutes. Gaylord goes back. It's a touchback. First and ten at the 20 yard line. Well, Minnesota has to do score two touchdowns against the best defense in the country. Uh, true, but it's been done. Yeah, and they got two first downs for the whole ball game. They got all the timeouts left. They might as well just go upstairs. 200 yards in the ball game. Over two to one. They just got to go upstairs, Lindsay. Now they've got seven minutes and 18 seconds left. They need two touchdowns, so let's put it upstairs. It's Gaylord going out to a wide right. Ricky Foggy is the quarterback. He has been all night long for Minnesota. They're running from a wishbone. They're changing the play. You see Foggy. Now watch the fake in the play. Penalty marker. Took too much time, Lindsay. So loud down here. He's got to yell out the changes. And he just lost track of the 25 seconds. Good ball. Ball start. Offense. That'll move it back to the 15-yard line. Make it first and 15. <laughs> He's telling to go over the middle. Uh, give him another shot to their tight end. Ricky Foggy to Gaylord out to the 25 yard line. He's stopped there by Derek White of Lubbock, Texas. Picked up 10. It's going to be second and five. Just a quick post. Rocky Gaylord. Covered on the outside by Derek White, the freshman out of Lubbock. It's his second catch tonight. He picked up 10, and he's they got second and five. They got a good position here. You've got to throw the football, Lindsay. If the clock keeps ticking away against you. David on the ground this time for first and ten at the 35 yard line. David Puck, Garrett. First down for Minnesota. Second straight 10 yard pickup for the Golden Gophers. Brown and Jones made the stop. They need bigger hunks for the first down and just off the left side. Oklahoma playing a little soft on defense. Thinking, I guess, the way I'm thinking, that they got to put the ball upstairs uh, every time you run a play. It's 25 seconds off that clock. Right? Maggie with the ball. Pops once. Goes to Gaylord. Gaylord. Oh, incomplete. He had a close call there for interference. Glenn was covering. 
I tell you, he showed you the strong arm there. Rocky Gaylord does a little square out and up. We've got him on the ice. Oh, there he is at the top of your screen. There's a square out, little pump fake. He didn't fool uh, number seven, Liddell Glenn. Now watch Glenn, does he interfere with this catch? Now he's got his back to the receiver. It goes the hands and it goes right through his arm. And they've got a replay here and they don't like it. Second look right here, it could have been called there, folks. Putting that arm up in front of the receiver, but he didn't have any contact with him. That was a ruling, no contact. Second and 10, Foggy threw that ball 50 yards in the air. This one on the ground up to the 37 yard line with Puck carrying. Stopped by Donnie Jones. That's time remaining. Six minutes left to play in the ball game. Oklahoma leading 13 to nothing. See, they got to get in and out of the huddle. They two touchdowns are down and they're just taking their time going back to the huddle. Now, this six minutes is critical, Lindsay. I never have understood why football teams take their time. They, they wait when it's six minutes to go in a game. They just take their time. And then when it gets to two minutes down, they start rushing. They should play in their two-minute timeout right now. A right, two-minute drill. They got one. It is third down and eight yards to go at the 37-yard line. They should try to conserve as much time as they can, even though there's six minutes to go in this ballgame. Hitchcock came over the ball and had to go back to the huddle. Now we're ready. Foggy. That'll bring the punting unit on. Kevin Starks, Matt Brown, was intended. Well, good coverage by Tony Raven back there, Jr. He really caused that pass to be incomplete. Adam Kelly comes in to do the punt. Oklahoma defense is something. Derek Shepard back there along with Sonny Brown. Now it is uh, Sonny Brown back Sonny there. Brown himself has gone back deep. Shepard is not back there. Shepard had 102 yards in returns, but he's not back there this time. This is Brown, puts up the fair catch signal and makes it. This is the one break. Sonny Brown substituting for Derek Shepard, who was shaken up a little bit earlier. There it is. Minnesota's got it back. That's Milt Bond, a defensive end, a junior from Milwaukee. Here he pops up the fair catch. And Milt Bond comes up with it. Number 87. There you see. And that's. Maybe the one break. Is it a little bit too late, Lindsay? 524. They need two touchdowns. They've got to get seven right here. It's at the 19-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for Minnesota in Oklahoma territory. As Ricky Foggy brings them up. They want a little quiet. Foggy. Back at the 24 by Darrell Reed of Cypress, Texas. Five yard loss, second and 15. Well, this is the best position Minnesota has had all night long. They come out on first down, they try to run the option, and Darrell Reed just takes care of that. Somebody missed a block on him, I think, Lindsay. Nobody was there at all. Cypress, Texas. Cock is running, of course. They've got to throw the ball against this defense. They can't run it in. Foggy with the football tries to reverse. Oh, yeah. And Couch gets it inside the 15 yard line before he's stopped by Sonny Brown. Gary Couch, and was he tackled? He looked like he was going to get the first down, but it's a great tackle defensively for Oklahoma here. They really look like they had something working here. Here comes the reverse. This is Gary Couch, a sophomore from Davenport, Iowa. And watch this tackle by Sonny Brown. You think he can tackle? Look, that's, per that's picture perfect, folks. Third and three, and the ball is at the 12-yard line. And we're getting a timeout on the field. 4.20 remaining to be played. We'll be right back. This is Turner Network Television. Let's take a look at that reverse. 
This is Gary Couch, a sophomore from Davenport, Iowa. Here comes a reverse. Now, they really look like they got something going. Watch a block split. But watch number eight, Sonny Brown, a junior. And he makes, a, I think, a touchdown-saving tackle, Lens. Third down and three yards to go. Minnesota has the ball at the Oklahoma 12-yard line. Oklahoma's leading 13, and I think we have four minutes and 20 seconds to play. Touchdown! Touchdown to Harris! Now Kevin Starks! Kevin Starks for the touchdown! And this place is up for grabs right now. The big senior from Robbins, Illinois makes a nice catch, Lindsay. Ball was put right there, and Starks went up for it and got it. So Minnesota's got their touchdown. Now they got a shot. 15 to go, plenty of time now. Gets the point coming. Jeff Lowmiller is then to attempt the conversion. Lowmiller to try the conversion. That is good. So as they come back up the field, it is Oklahoma 13, Minnesota 7, and we'll be right back. Take a look at that touchdown catch. Here it is, off play action, reverse pitch. You see the big tight end running free, and he throws a little bit behind him, and he makes a beautiful catch. Kevin Stark. Now, Oklahoma has to protect against the possibility of an onside right. kick, and they're doing that. Well, there's 4.15 to go. There's plenty of time. Now's the time to kick it deep, I would think, Lindsay. The defense has play, been playing sensational here in the second half. They stop them. They'll get the football back. They got time. Lowville is going to kick, and Collins and Shepard are deep. Sure, they're going to kick it. He's going to kick it away. And there'll be no return. It's a touchback. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Now, that defense, you've seen it many times when an offense scores a touchdown. Teams behind. The defense comes out, and they're all pumped up. And I must say, this defense has been all pumped up all night long from Minnesota. Win, lose, or draw, they have really played sensational. We have seen some great defense on both sides here tonight. We really have. Of course, that goes without saying for that Oklahoma defense. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. The ovation is for the hometown Golden Gophers of the University of Minnesota. And they got a six point. And you got to feel a little for Sonny Brown, who was taking over for Derek Shepard, the first Punt return, he makes a fair catch and he drops it. Four minutes, 15 seconds to play. And if they stop here, uh oh, they're offside. I think they were. Aikman handed it off to Perry, and Perry got up there about nine yards. I thought the right guard moved. Uh, see if we could get that back. It looked like there was a little move in the offensive line before the snap to me, Lindsay. Let's see. Watch a uh, right guard to the left of your screen. There it is. You see move, and he got away with that. Yes, he did. That was movement. The right guard moved, and he got away with it. Second now, instead of an eight-yard gain, Lindsay, that should have been first and 15. That could be a difference in this ball game. Second down, about a yard and a half. There's timeouts remaining in the game. Clock is running. 3.35 left to play. First and ten. Donovan Small ran him out. I tell you, wait till Lou Holtz sees that to replay. <laughs> uh, it, uh, listen, and, I, and the first thing I want to say is to the referees, they're going to miss one or two. And here we see Mr. Stell get the first down around the left side. He just turns it on. Damon Stell, the sophomore from Oklahoma City. And boy, what a difference it is. And Lou Holtz is going to say, you know, they missed that offsides. And, the movement should have been first and 15 instead of second and two. Oh, what a big difference. First and 10 after 32 now for Oklahoma, leading 13 to 7. Taken right across the 35 by Lydell Carr to the 36 yard line. Game four. It'll be second and six. The clock is running. Steve Thompson made the tackle. Our thanks to spotter Bill Friel, statistician Elvin Lindblad. And at the University of Minnesota, to Director of Athletics Paul Gill, Coach Lou Holtz and his staff, and to SID Bob Peterson, 
and in Oklahoma, the director of athletics, Wade Walker, coach Barry Switzer and his staff, and SID Mike Treps. 13 to 7. Oklahoma leading with two minutes and 48 seconds left to play in the game. Second down play. Back up at the 37 was Leon Perry, and his Nigerian made the tackle. Now here it comes. 2.30 to go, clock ticking. They got to hold him right here. They know they're going to keep it on the ground. Keep it running. Here comes the wishbone right at you. It's number two, Leon Perry. And look at this tackle by Peter Nigerian. He put his helmet, shoulder pads right in the numbers. Third and five at the 37. Third and five with the clock running down to 210. A big play right here. How many miles do you think he walks on the sidelines? He walks up and down continuously. This crowd is alive. for Peter Nigerian. Oh, he's been all over the field, the big senior from Minneapolis. The punting unit is all for Oklahoma. Minnesota wants the ball. Here's another look at it. Lindsay as Nigerian makes the stop. 128 on the clock. Mike Winchester's in to do the punting. Gaylord's dropped back deep, standing at his own 22. They're letting it run. They're just letting it run. Gaylord goes for the fair catch, and he makes it at the 30-yard line. That's where Minnesota starts. First and 10 at their own 30, 34-yard punt, no return. One minute, five seconds left to play. Switzer's a busy man along the sideline. Switzer's saying, let me get out of here alive with my life, I tell you. 105, could this happen? Could this happen? That's what he's thinking, Lindsay. This defense, of course, the best in the country. They didn't give up that touchdown. You're gonna have to chalk that up to a miscued fair catch. So now, the pressure's on that young quarterback again, Mr. Foggy. Can he do it? Ricky Foggy is the quarterback in there for Minnesota. Trailing by six points. Couch and Gaylord, the left receivers. Double to the left side. Three-yard pickup for Gary Couch. Here's the replay. Look, he hands the ball right to nobody. Look at this. He's just got it hanging there in his right hand. Now watch number 21. He's going to break free. He's open. You see him put up his right arm? And Mr. Foggy puts it right on the numbers when he needs to be. A 23-yard game. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. 58 seconds to play Foggy with the ball. Brings it out. And a second. To the 43-yard line by Valdez Baylor. Tony Raymond in on the stop again. Picked up four. It'll be second and six. And now let's go to the studio for a score. A couple of quick ones for you, Lindsay. Reggie Dupart, Jeff Atkins with three touchdowns apiece for SMU. Southwest Louisiana came from behind. Lamar has a lead with six minutes to play. And Grambling, yes, is still beating Oregon State 14-3 in the fourth. Busy coach along the sideline now. Yes, sir. Only 48 seconds, Lizzie. I think they got one timeout left, and that's it. Second and six at the 43-yard line. Ray Armstrong has come back into the ball game. Gaylord has come out for the moment. 48 seconds left on the clock. That's time remaining in the game. It's Oklahoma 13 and Minnesota 7. Foggy's had a tough night, Lindsay. 7 out of 19 for 100 yards. But it won't matter if he can get this offense into the end zone and a shot at an extra point and a win. It has all come down to this at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. 48 seconds on the clock. Here comes Minnesota. Look how deep this four deep men uh, secondary is for Oklahoma. They're really playing back, especially the safety men. They're out of the picture almost. Ricky Foggy's the quarterback. Foggy's got the football. Penalty mark is thrown. It's completed up there across the 40-yard line to Puck. And he has stopped at the 39. 
Tony Casillas got away and he was held. He was grabbed and they caught it. Tony Casillas, the big All-American, possibly the best lineman in the country this year, got loose and somebody tried to hold him and they caught it. Referee Tom Quinn. There he is. Talking to Castillas. Well, that'll put him back 10. Yeah, now they got third down. They got two downs. They must get it to about the 36-yard line to get a first down now. Holding. Repeat. Uh, repeat second down. Right. There it is again. Now watch number 62. You see? Oh, he just had a hold of him by the right jersey. Just trying to drug him down. That was Troy Wolfo. Back to the 48 yard line. We're at second and 15. Buggy. He yeah, had it away. He had an interception there for a minute, dropped it. Third and 15 at the 48 and 29 seconds on the clock. Lou Holtz, head coach of the Golden Gophers. This is his second season here. Came from Arkansas. Barry Switzer, his 13th season as head coach at the University Look at of Oklahoma. It. Oklahoma University, I beg your pardon. He put his hands right on his face. I tell you, that's the most nervous man in the world. And Lou Holtz. It's just hoping against hope that they can throw something up, maybe get an interference call, or maybe get a deflection. Maggie. That stops the clock with 22 seconds left. They're going to take a timeout, though. Gaylord made the catch. White made the tackle. Gaylord calling time. 16-yard pickup. We got it. This is Mr. Gaylord. He's his favorite receiver. And watch him just wait for that football. He's right in the middle of the zone. Those safety men are way back. And he just gets on his knees and makes the catch. That's Derek White over his shoulder. First and 10 now for Minnesota. They have the ball at the 32-yard line of Oklahoma. Now, Lindsay, if they elect to go all the way down, they're out of timeouts. They complete a pass and don't get it in the end zone. To probably before they get the line up, if it's not a first down, the game's over. You're right. So they've got to throw. They've got time for maybe three if they throw it in the end zone. I'd get a few people down there and hope for a deflection. The old Hail Mary job. Well, they've settled on it, and here comes Ricky Foggy back onto the field now. Gaylord's out there in the huddle already. That's Foggy. Oklahoma leading 13 to 7, and it's been a battle here in, Min in uh, Minneapolis tonight. Well, they were praying to stay close and hope for that one break, and they got it. They took it in for a score, and this is, they've got a chance. Gaylord, the wide receiver is Foggy. Clock starts on the snap. Foggy's got the ball. Throw it away. Throw it away. 14 oh. seconds left. I don't know if he's throwing it away or he's trying to get it to his tight end and his momentum carried the ball out of bounds. Could have thrown it in the vicinity of Kevin Starks, his big tight end down there. That took eight seconds off the clock. Greg Otto comes in now at tight end. Number 84. Starts comes off. 14 seconds left. Second and 10 at the 32. Well, oh, this will give this Minnesota team a lot of confidence for their Big Ten schedule coming up. Win, lose, or draw here, then. Couch and Gaylord, the wide receiver's double right. That's what they're going to do. Behind at the 39 yard line, Troy Johnson was the man who made the hit. Clock is stopped with eight seconds remaining as they call the timeout immediately. Troy Johnson from the blind side. Now they just got to throw the home run and hope they were going to do it that time. But Troy Johnson came from the weak side and made a great, great tackle. Ball is spotted at the 39 yard line. Barry Switzer getting in a little more yardage along the sideline. The executive producer for TBS Sports is Don Ellis. Tonight's game has been produced by Michael Lardner. Directed by Tom Smith. Technical director, Mark Johnson. Associate director, Gary Lehman. And associate producer, Bill Thomas. And the rest of the five TBS crew. 
Oklahoma is leading in the game by a score of 13 to 7. Eight seconds remaining on the clock. Third down. This would be one of the biggest upsets in Minnesota's history if they could do it. Here's a team. Blue Holtz took over last year. What? It was four and seven. Great improvement. He's got this whole area up in arms over this football team. Third and 17 at the 39. Gaylord Couch, Baylor all in trips to the right side. Foggy is the quarterback. Foggy. Going as far as he can throw to the end zone. And it's incomplete. Got one second left. One second on the clock. It was Glenn covering along with Sonny Brown. Now there's one second left, and the clock does not start again until the snap. Fourth down coming up. And Barry switches. Wow, this is the longest 30 seconds I've ever spent in my life. <laughs> one more shot in the locker for the Golden Gophers of the University of Minnesota. Oklahoma has led throughout the ball game. And they're leading here, 13 to 7. And we've seen some great defensive football on this field tonight. If I were those defensive ends, I would not. I repeat, not let him try to get outside. Again, he lost it down to the end zone. And it is incomplete. The game has ended, and it's all over. And the crowd is standing in ovation of these ball players because they've had a tremendous football game. The final score is Oklahoma 13, Minnesota 7.